Tony's back. Uh, Tony, I have a quick question just before we get started. Can, can we get a hello, hello? Hello, hello. There we go. Oh, yes, we missed it. Oh, uh, it's been a while. Uh, okay, what is going on, YouTube? It's your voice, Banco, obviously back with Tony. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put Tony's channel, a link to it, in the description for you guys to check out. Tony, I, I sent you a screenshot already. But we need you back, man. Yeah, it's... uh. I, I mean, I have more time than ever, and I still haven't... Like, I have actually a video uh, lined up. I'm just finishing editing it right now. Uh, okay. So, look forward to that one whenever that comes out. Hopefully that comes out. But, uh, for now, I guess I'm still content with just being on your channel. And you're doing something really cool on the channel. Something I don't think we've ever done here on the channel before. And that's Photon. Photon obviously got support... I guess not so recently anymore. It's been like, it's been a few sets since the actual Galaxy Eyes Photon support, but it's actually gotten a few cool things that I think I wanted to showcase since the last time I did Photons in any channel at this point. All right, so let's get right into it. All right, starting off, we have, I guess, the main centerpiece of the deck, oh and then it's God. three Galaxy Eyes Photon Dragon. They're not just any Galaxy Eyes. Three Ghost Rare Galaxy Eyes. Yeah, three. Unfortunately, one of them is first day, the other two are only. We, we don't talk about these two. So if you're gonna summon one, summon this one first. Regardless, so Galaxy Eyes Photon Dragon is the centerpiece of the entire deck. Um, its effects aren't really that relevant. You can't, it has a special summon uh, condition where you can sacrifice two monsters with 2k or more attack to special summon from your hand. So it doesn't necessarily brick like all the other boss monsters like Blue Eyes would. And in battle, it could banish both monsters until the end of the battle phase. When they come back, if the banished monster was an Xyz monster, it gets bigger based off the number of materials that you got rid of. Nice. Uh, those are very superfluous. The main idea of this deck is that a lot of your cards will s revolve around summoning specifically this monster, and you're playing three more because of the fact that a lot of them summon from the deck or hand, but not really from the graveyard. So you'll find yourself burning out of three copies very quickly, but a lot of the cards need this card to actually do anything. Okay. With that being said, still a very powerful monster. When worse comes to worse, it is, when you get to that simplified game state, a beater if you need it. 3k beat stick. 3k beat stick. From there, we then move on to the first card that centers around Galaxy Eyes into Galaxy Eyes Afterglow Dragon. So this came out, I believe, in Legendary Duelist Season 2 as one of the special promo cards. It's also reprinted, I think, in the, uh... I think Maze of Memories, actually? No. Yeah, um, Monstrous Revenge. There you go. Uh, the card here can special summon itself if you control a Galaxy Eyes monster. Not just necessarily Galaxy Eyes Photon Dragon, but any Galaxy Eyes monster. Something extremely relevant because your extra deck monsters are also Galaxy Eyes monsters. So it's a free body. It's some self in defense, so you can't beat with it. However, uh, if it's detached as a material, you can special summon or take a Galaxy Eyes monster from your deck and put it as a material or special summon to your field. Okay. If you do this during the battle phase, however, you instead double the attack of all number of monsters on the field as well. Oh, wait, this is like an OTK machine. So this card, yes. So in a lot of situations, you can use this as an OTK machine. A lot of your Galaxy has uh, Xyz monsters that will detach this have effects that pump its attack. So when you do this, the attack of a boost will resolve first, and then the double will apply, and that leads to absurd amounts of attack. That's crazy. But you're also using this going first to create additional extending combos with some of your other Galaxy has monsters. So really powerful monster, likewise. Uh, it has to be detached for a light Xyz monster specifically, though. So there is only a certain number of things you can detach it for. Mm. However, there are a few cool options that I'll showcase in the combo. Nice. Anyway, from there we have the one Galaxy Brave. A uh, Galaxy Brave can reveal a Photon or Galaxy Monster and special summon it to the field. Then, its level becomes a level of the monster revealed. Likewise, when it's special summoned, you target a Galaxy Monster in your graveyard and its attack is equal to that monster's attack. So there's two aspects for this. One, it's just a generic standard that lets you use your Galaxy or Photon Monsters as just a way to modulate the levels. Mm -hmm. In many situations, you'll be revealing a Galaxy Monster or a Photon Monster, special summoning this, and then summoning that same monster for just next Xyz place into copies of the level. But there are situations where in late game, I've special summoned this, targeted a big uh, monster in my graveyard, and made a 4K and just swung with it. That's crazy. It, it comes up. Again, in most cases, it will just simply be an extender. Uh, from there, we now have the one Galaxy Knight when it's normal summoned. Uh, mind you, it could be normal summoned without tribute while you control a Galaxy or Photon monster. But when it's normal summoned, you can decrease its attack by a thousand to summon back a Galaxy Eyes Photon Dragon from your graveyard and defense. This is just a free rank eight. Granted, a lot of your combos pretty much only give you one or two normal summons. That's right, one, two, two normal summons. You can't get normal, extra normal summons in this deck, but it's one of the ways that you can just make another rank eight if you need to on the top of your general board. Then we have one of the newer supports from Photon Hypernova in three Galaxy Summoner. So Galaxy Summoner is actually innocuously powerful. First off, on Summon, it's essentially a more powerful version of Galaxy Knight. On Normal Summon, it special summons back any Galaxy monster. And that is really relevant because it summons back monsters that have on Summon trigger effects as well. Nice. Uh, more importantly though, it lets you target any one of your Galaxy or uh, Photon monsters and modulate its level to four or eight. This is relevant because it means that since it's a level four, you can modulate a non-level four monster 
to level four and then overlay with it. And that okay. lets you access to a lot of your rank four combos in the deck. A really useful card, you do uh, end up searching this a lot and this is kind of the way that your combos kind of flow from a four into an eight very quickly. Okay. Then we have one of the uh, one card that came in World Superstars in three, Galaxy Soldier. So this is the only non-level four, non-level eight Galaxy monster you're playing, which again, is why your Galaxy Summoner kind of becomes relevant in this specific scenario. But it can be special summoned from your hand by discarding any light monster from your hand. And upon summon, or upon special summon, search for any Galaxy monster from your deck, your hand. Uh, again, it's a monster searcher for any card that you need. It is free special summon. And shockingly enough, in this deck, given the fact that you're playing so many level eights that can kind of brick, it's a way to sometimes get rid of cards that you need in the graveyard. Okay. So it's actually relevant there. And because of the fact that now you have the Galaxy Summoner, its level five is nowhere near as pertinent as before where you had to actually burn extra space in playing things like cyber dragon and cyber dragon infinity just to make use of this weird level okay moving on from there we have the next card in three photon orbital photon orbital is it used to be probably the most powerful card in the deck now it's kind of like taking a back seat uh it can equip itself from the hand or field to any photon or galaxy monster you control and once equipped to that monster it can't be destroyed by battle you may think that's just kind of like an irrelevant thing but shockingly a lot of your monsters can't be destroyed by card effects so slapping this on top really makes your monsters kind of just hard to kill okay but if you don't want that, you can also launch this monster while it's equipped to a monster to search for any Galaxy or Photon monster from your deck to your hand. It's another searcher for the deck that kind of just, as long as you can commit a monster on the field, you can get this here. It's just another searcher in that way. Okay. Then we have three Photon Vanisher. Photon Vanisher cannot attack uh, on the turn special summon. Actually, I don't think you attack in general. Regardless, it can special summon itself while you control a Galaxy or Photon monster, like a lot of the monsters you've seen so far. And when it special summon searches for Galaxy Eyes Photon Dragon, specifically. Just a way to get that card into rotation, because once you get into rotation, a lot of your combos start off. With that being said, however, it also has an additional effect where if it exceeds material for one of your Galaxy or Photon monsters, it lets that monster banish anything it battles with, which... Oh. shouldn't be super relevant but you actually don't have a lot of uh removal. like removal in that way so it's actually kind of useful that way nice again another extender same likewise two photon thrasher uh just a free monster that can be special summoned while you control no monsters and it's just a level four uh it can be used as beatdown a lot of the monsters here you may find can be used as beatdown but because of the fact that this one can only be special while you control no monsters whereas the other ones kind of do the inverse of you need to control a monster. This one's actually kind of the worst one out of the bunch, which is why you're only playing two. Okay. Then we have two uh, cards that came in from two different sets. We have one Photon Emperor and one Photon Jumper. Ignore the realistically a lot of their actual main effects. So this one's kind of a really bad battle fader. And this one, however, is a little more relevant when summoned. But both monsters have an effect when they're sent to the graveyard. Uh, this one was special summoned itself to the field, which is relevant because when it's special summoned for that turn, you get an extra normal summon for of a photon or galaxy monster. I.e., any of those uh, normal summon effects like your galaxy knight or your galaxy summoner, that's where this is relevant. Jump on the hand when it's sent to the graveyard in any way, likewise. Uh, searches for any galaxy or photon spell or trap card. More this, is just, this is just a way to get into your uh, actual spells and traps, which does actually a lot of crazy things. In most cases, you'll be using this as an extension piece. You'll be using this later on for the actual spell and search for, to grab one of your like powerful one of spells. And both inherently let you essentially combo off. And you have so many ways to actually dump them, whether it's I by A through Galaxy Soldier's effect if you open it. But there's actually a lot of cards in your X deck and your spell and traps that just dump cards from your deck to your hand. Okay. Anyway, now that we've covered the monsters, we move on to the spell, starting with three Galaxy Expedition. Galaxy Expedition, uh, when it's activated, you can only be activated while you control a level five or higher Galaxy or Photon monster, and some of the Galaxy eyes, uh, uh, Galaxy or Photon monster from your deck that's level five or higher, but you can't enter your battle phase. It's essentially just an extender. And I know a lot of players kind of don't want to play this card because of the idea that it locks you out of your battle phase, so sometimes it's kind of dead going second. But uh, it is an extender that you generally can use innocuously off of something like a Galaxy Soldier to continue to build your Born. And I think sometimes, well, m you might want to play one or two. I think it's a good three of just because it gets you into the pieces that you're missing. Okay. Yeah. Then we have one of the new cards from Photon Hypernova in two Galaxy Hundred. So Galaxy 100 is a continuous spell that when activated sends a Galaxy or Photon card from your deck to the graveyard. Which i.e. means you can send your Photon Emperor or your Photon Jumper to get their search effects off. This is just a foolish barrel essentially. However, it also has the additional fact where if you special summon a Galaxy Eyes monster, you can, uh, actually I think it's Galaxy Eyes Photon Dragon specifically. Yeah, it's Galaxy Eyes Photon Dragon specifically. You can do one of two things. You can look at your opponent's extra deck and rip one card out of it, or you summon a number monster from it. There, in most situations, you'll just be looking at your opponent's extra deck and taking out the one, uh, one of, like you could take out a, a Rise Heart and that kind of ends a cash tier game. Yep. However, there have been games where I looked at my opponent's extra deck and summoned a Baguska. 
that's kind of crazy. It's, it's, it's really hilarious that, that you can do that. But in most cases, it, because of the fact that you have ways of searching into this with something like Photon Jumper, it is a card that you're going to grab to just continue your plays by dumping a card from the deck. Okay. Right. We don't want to play three, though, because it is a hard once per turn to activate uh, each of these. So if you open multiple, it's actually pretty dead. Okay. Uh, then we have the one Photon Sanctuary on activation. Summons two 2,000 attack Photon Tokens. It's meant to be used to summon your Galaxy's Photon Dragon, but you'll be using it to make links. It used to be really good because you can uh, actually make Union Carrier with this, and then use Union Carrier to equip Photon Orbital and actually go off that way. Good times, good times. But without Union Carrier, this card is actually significantly worse because the only thing it really does is make just your Galaxy Isaac Link monsters. And since it locks you into lights, it's actually kind of awkward sometimes. Okay. Then we have two of what they call the one of blow up cards in one Numbers Last Hope and one uh, Galaxy Trance. Both these cards are kind of like one card exceeds. This card, when activated, special summons two monsters from your graveyard, summon them back, and you can overlay them into a number monster. Okay. In a lot of situations, you're going to be activating this to bring back both your Afterglow and a Galaxy Eyes, overlaying them into something like your OTK machine and just killing your opponent from there. Okay. This one, however, uh, targets a Photon or Galaxy Monster in your graveyard, summons it back, and then summons the inverse from the deck, and then does the same thing, lets you then you overlay them. So you but summon a Photon from like Graveyard, for example, and then you summon a Galaxy from, from your deck, and then you oh, that makes your level 8 of this okay. of sorts. Uh, granted, both these cost life. This costs 2,000, this costs half. Which means sometimes you may not be able to play this, but you may be able to play this because you're always going to be able to play for half. Mm. But at the end of the day, you'll be using one of these at some point to be able to go into your final play to sometimes end the game. A lot of times, this deck going second is going to attempt to play a lot of baits until it goes into one of these to make the exact OTK to kill your uh, opponent. But in a lot of cases, going first, it's just another way to actually uh, build a board. Okay. And yeah, uh, unfortunately, this one kind of does lock you into Galaxy and Photon Monsters, whereas this one does not, which is why preferably you want to go into this one going first and this one going second. But in most cases, they both functionally serve the same purpose, just to end the game. Okay. Then we have one Galaxy Zero. This is kind of a awkward premature burial. Mm -hmm. Brings back a Galaxy Monster, equips it to this card. Uh, it can activate its effects. A uh, fun fact, however, if you bring back Galaxy has Photon Dragon. Um, thing is, if the monster that you equ equipped this card will be destroyed, you destroy this card instead. In doing so, it frees up the effects, and then if your opponent attacks him again, you can use Galaxy Eyes' effect to banish it to refresh oh. the attack. So it's actually really cool that way. Then we have the one Rota, the one Melody of Awakening Dragon, a way to search into shockingly your Galaxy Eyes and your Afterglow. They're both 3,000 attack and 2,500 defense. It also lets you discard things like your jumper and that you open your hand. Another way to discard it. Uh, Foolish Barrel just has another way to dump uh, one of your Galaxy or Photon Monsters from your deck to the grave. Shockingly, they trigger off of anything, so you might as well have two different avenues to do so. Okay. Two trade, and once again, you're open a lot of eights. Some of them you want in the grave. This is a way to get them there. And then for the hand trap uh, responses, we have two sales ban and one call by the grave. Sales ban, I like that. Okay, so call by the grave, I think everyone understands the idea of being able to respond hand traps, but sales ban is actually a little innocuous here. First off, sales ban lets you declare any card, and for that turn, that monster, that card's effects cannot be activated, its effects are negated, and but you can't use that declared card for the rest of the game. Yep. So in most cases, you have noticed, I'm not playing any hand traps. So I really don't care if I declare a hand trap and do so. However, I'm also aware that this deck has only certain hand traps that it realistically loses to. And a lot of times you can kind of suss that out relative to what you're playing to declare the right hand trap. More important though, if you go second, you can declare a monster on the field as well and just turn off that monster. Oh. If everyone has an Appaloosa and you activate and declare Appaloosa, that 3200 attack on that Appaloosa means absolutely nothing to you. Nice. So it's a way to actually turn off monsters on your opponent's field because if you're going to OTK them, who, who cares what you're like? Yeah, that's true. Who cares yeah, if you really have matter. another turn? And that kind of serves the enemy main deck. That's 40 cards right there. Moving on to the extra deck, we start off with one, uh, for the rank fours at least, we have one Starlight Photon Blast Dragon and one Galaxy Photon Dragon. So these kind of actually work with each other. So Photon Starlight Photon Blast Dragon uh, protects or gives monsters with 2,000 or more attack on the field uh, untargetable and indestructible from card effects. So this is a protection. Granted, it's only 1,800 attack itself. This is where Galaxy uh, Photon Dragon comes in. Uh, both these, Galaxy Photon Dragon, once on the field, increase the attack of all your light monsters by 500. Okay. So, so conveniently, this will protect, give the uh, attack it needs to protect itself, and this will protect that from being just targeted or destroyed by card effects. Additionally, both have actually some really nice synergy effects. This, on your opponent's turn, can detach material to summon back a Galaxy Eyes Photon Dragon from your graver. This is one of the few ways you actually have of bring back your Galaxy Eyes Photon Dragon, whereas the other ones only grab from deck. This one, however, can detach a material to either take a Galaxy or Photon card and dump it or add it to your hand. It's both either Rota or Foolish Burial, and both effects are really powerful in setting up your plays. It also has actually a third really random effect. If a Galaxy or Photon monster will be special summoned, you can target it and make it a level four or eight. 
And oh, that okay. means that in those awkward situations where you got the wrong monster for the level you need, you can make it the other level to actually make Xyz place that way. And a lot of times, so you're, a lot of times you'll be axing this going first. You'll be making both of these to just create a untargetable, indestructible board with a minimum, minimum amount of gates to answer whatever else is needed. From there, we then have the one number 90 Galaxy uh, Photon Lord. Uh, can be destroyed by ba uh, card effects while you control a Galaxy, uh, a Galaxy monster, I believe in the uh as a material but when your opponent activates a monster effect it detaches the material to negate that effect uh and if you detach a photon monster I believe it destroys that monster okay i may have flipped that around uh regardless however it also has an additional effect while on your opponent's it just searches for a galaxy or photon card uh i don't know how often that is superfluously relevant it does create a great follow-up for you and a lot of times you'll probably just be grabbing one of the two one ofs i told you about either galaxy trance or galaxy uh numbers last hope yep. but um in most cases uh it's just kind of another negate uh, now, if I, I just mentioned something, I realized I forgot something that was kind of relevant. Uh, I mentioned that this card is called Numbers Last Hope, and I keep saying that you could search into it. That's because it's treated as a Galaxy S card. Yep. So that's something I probably want to clarify there. Okay. Anyway, from there, you have the one number 38. This is a spell negate, but it also, funny enough, it redirects battles to it, which means that it protects these monsters from being run over by something bigger. If you slap on a Photon Lord uh, uh, or a Photon Orbit onto this, your opponent just can't kill it at all. You can't kill this, they can't kill this. You're, you're creating kind of a it's locked like a out lock, defensive yeah. board. And this is something that you can do first very easily. Uh, you have the one Felgrand. This is just a rank 8 you can make. Fun fact, it's a light rank 8, which means you could also detach it on your turn by detaching an afterglow to trigger the effect. And that's something you can do to create a, a disruption that also lets you extend. Okay. Alternatively, you can make a Cypher Dragon that can then overlay into a Cypher X Dragon that can also detach to which triggers your afterglow, but once again, provides your field untargetable for the, until the end of your opponent's turn. Uh, it also has a really cool other effect that only became relevant recently. Uh, on your uh, standby phase, you can choose one of your light dragons, uh, exceeds monster in your graveyard, bounce it back to the extra deck, and then exceed summon using this card's material. Before, you used to be only able to exceed summon things like a Hope Harbinger. Now, you can actually exceed summon back a Galaxy as uh, the Galaxy Photon Dragon, and then search immediately. So okay. it actually builds into a follow up if you really wanted to. Then we have for the uh, OTK material stuff, we have one Galaxy Prime Photon Dragon and one number C62 Galaxy Prime Neo Galaxy Eyes Prime Photon Dragon. Uh, both of these can essentially end the game. This one, by detaching material when it attacks, uh, gains a level of all, uh, uh, gains attack by 200 for each rank on the field. It alone is eight, so it gains 1600 attack at minimum. If you put anything else on the board, it gets massive. Combined with an afterglow, it hits like 10k higher on average. That's crazy. Which can kill your opponent. This is more absurd, actually. Uh, while this card has a Galaxy Eyes Photon in its material, is unaffected by opponent's active and monster effect, so it's almost foolproof. You can detach the material, it makes three attacks this turn. And then combined with the fact that um, I believe Wall has Galaxy Eyes Photon in its material, it also gains attack equal to the level and rank of its exceeds materials. So assuming you have, let's say, two eights and this, uh, the Galaxy has Prime Photon in it, which it can exceed summon on top of for free, it's going to hit like 6,400 attack on average. Doubled by this, you're talking about 12,000 attacking three monsters. That's most times at the end of the game. Huh. Lastly, we have three Soul Flare, uh, two Soul Flare Dragon on summon, adds back any Galaxy or Photon card, just recovery for your plays. But also on your opponent's turn, you can either discard a Galaxy as Photon Dragon or a Galaxy and a Photon card to target a special monster on the field and blow it up. It's disruption that is not necessarily negation and that you can make with your uh, Photon Sanctuary. Yep. Uh, granted, this was this is only kind of just a recovery. And that kind of rounds up, I think, 11 action deck monsters. The other cards in there are functionally whatever you want to be. Uh, I'd say Zeus, you could play some Rancades. You could play the Cyber Dragon package, even though it's not nearly as relevant now that you have a way to modulate the Galaxy Soldier to a different level. But these are the only, I think, 11 extra deck monsters that you're actually going to need for most of your plays. Okay. Yeah, yeah that makes sense. And, um, uh, did you have a combo? I know I, you always I, have combos, you always have something. I do on. have, I can do a test hand really quickly if you want. Oh, let's do a test hand, why not? Deck of Shuffle, let's see what we got working with us here. We have one Galaxy Brave, one Photon Orbital, one Trade In, one uh, Photon Thrasher, and one Photon Orbital. Uh, I think we could probably make something out of this, so we're gonna start probably by special summoning out that Thrasher since we control the monsters. We're going to activate the effect of the Photon Orbital to equip it to it, and then launch it immediately to search for any Galaxy or Photon Monster, of which we'll grab the Vanisher. Since we control a Photon Monster, we'll special summon the Vanisher and use Vanisher's effect on summon to search for a Galaxy-Eyes Photon Dragon. And this is where we gamble a little bit. 
But before we gamble, I'm going to reveal this Galaxy Eyes, uh, br uh, reveal the Galaxy Eyes Photon Dragon, especially on the Brave, and make it a level 8. It doesn't matter if they, I have to copy the attack. In this case, it will not matter. But then I'm going to actually trade in to send it uh, to the Grave to draw 2. That's a little weird, but we can make that work. We're not going to overlay these two. So summon out Galaxy Eyes Photon Dragon. And there, we'll declare an ash, just so that we can actually get this effect off. We'll nice. detach the material for our Galaxy Photon Dragon to take any of our Galaxy or Photon Monsters and add it to our hand instead of sending it to the grave. We'll add the Galaxy Soldier. From there, we'll activate the Galaxy Soldier's effect, sending the Photon Emperor from our hand to the grave to special summon to the field. In doing so, we'll trigger two effects. We'll trigger the on summon effect of our Galaxy Soldier to search, as well as the Photon Emperor to summon itself back, as long as I have a Galaxy or Photon Monster in the graveyard. That is a stipulation I have forgotten to mention, but we'll mention it now. Anyway, Galaxy Soldier will resolve, and that will let me grab my Galaxy Summon. Now, this effect for an extra normal summon is a lingering effect. If I get rid of this monster, it will still apply. So in this specific situation, this is where I'm going to overlay these two to summon out that Galaxy Lord so I have a little protection against in a beer, per se. Okay. I'm then, uh, using my first normal summon, I'm going to normal summon out that Galaxy Summon and use its effect to bring back my Galaxy Eyes Photon. So this is your first normal summon, by the way. This is my first normal summon. Yep. Then I'm going to activate Galaxy Summon's effect, target my Galaxy Soldier to make it a level 8. Or I can make it a level 4. Honestly, I could probably make it a level 4 as well. So I'm going to overlay these two to make a level 4 instead, and then I'm going to make a Blast Dragon. And then from Blast Dragon's effect, I'm going to use Blast Dragon's effect, and that lets me special summon a Photon Monster from my hand, of which I'll special summon out the Photon Orbital. Since I special summon a monster, I can then activate the effect of my Galaxy Eyes Photon Dragon, or Galaxy Photon Dragon, to make it a level 8. And then, I'll overlay these two. Yo, this is crazy. You're playing through Ash because you had the sales ban. You're playing through Nib because you have this. To make this. And that is the board I'm going to end on. So, what do we actually have here working for? We have a Spell in the Gate. We have a monster to gate. Our entire field cannot be targeted or destroyed by card effects, and these can't be run over because you'll have to get at least 3k attack on the field to redirect to this. So the only thing they can do is try to battle this first. You have to try to battle this first, and that's through a monster negate and through a spell negate. Granted, on that on our opponent's uh, turn, we start by searching for a card. And in most cases, what we're going to be searching into, assuming that we can bait everything out, is going to be Numbers Last Hope. So what? that we can kill our opponent next Yes, time. because if assuming that we exhaust our opponent in the meantime of trying to deal with this, this will just summon out the Galaxy Prime Photon Dragon, and then we'll just end it from there. Yo, that's actually pretty crazy. And this is a very, like, there is a uh, very simplistic board. In a lot of situations, sometimes your goal is to grab yourself into the Afterglow, if you can't set up this, yeah. to instead make a uh, Cypher Dragon to go into a Cypher X Dragon, detaching this to get the additional level 8. In doing so, even if this dies by battle, uh, it's fine. You'll just overlay back into that on your next turn and continue your place from there. But in this case... In this case, we're just going to make the simplistic board. I also want to point out something really cool about this entire board. Since you have to redirect, you have to detach the material. In detaching the material, you now make this effect live to detach that material to summon this back to the field. Oh, bro, this is so crazy. So you can you can very much like this deck. It can be very sticky going first and going second. You're just gonna be trying to do the same thing, but, just but you're win. ending with uh, you're gonna end that with one of those two spells to just instead just turn into an OTK. That's insane. This is actually. I'm actually very impressed by this deck. I didn't think this deck could do things like that. It's got a lot of plays. Unfortunately, if you're asking if it's meta, I think the inherent issue, as you saw, I burned my whole hand doing it. There's not yeah. a combo in this deck that is like one card we get there. It's always going to be like the whole hand gets you into the dream, and it's impressive for that reason. And as a result, you're like, if you're going to play against something like a cashier, which starts off with just Unicorn, or you play Runic, where it just starts off with Sprite, yeah. sometimes you're, you're, you're really tough. not going to be able to like out advantage them this way. However, against a Runic board, I feel like this is pretty stable. I feel like against any board, this is pretty stable if you're able to set it up. Yeah, like you, it's not like they can make a Fenrir and deal with this particularly easily. If they can, like again, they're working through a lot of negate and protect. Yeah. And the, they don't deal with this. Don't forget this searches as well. And you're just going to rebuild and get snowball into the game. Okay, Tony, thank you for the deck profile. I appreciate it, man. This is actually a pretty cool deck profile. I'm sure the viewers appreciate it too. Again, make sure to check out Tony's channel. Uh, I'll put a link in the description. Tony's gonna be. He's already promised at the beginning of the video that there's a video coming up. So. I'm gonna hold you to it, and so are the viewers. All right, thank you guys all for watching. I appreciate you. Make sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already. And with that, Spanko and Tony signing out. Peace.